Guardians of the Universe. Uh, not having much voice, but this was this is easily one of the happiest videos that I'm ever gonna make. Uh, my team, Lusk, made it to the Champions League playoff round, which, given our recent history or our overall history, is just staggering. I really cannot believe it. As you can see, I don't have much voice, but I just, I'm so excited. I know I should sleep by now, but I really need to talk about it uh, to get it all out. Um, well, I'll also look at the other results uh, in uh, the third qualifying round for the Champions League, because there were quite some interesting ones there as well um, that uh, we should uh, definitely look into. Um, unfortunately, I did not find the time to do any Premier League or even League uh, um, review. I probably, unless I get the chance, but I think by this time it's not that I will probably tag it on to uh, next week's when I do a review of the second round that's gonna be played. To the happy game, Lask against Basel. Um, last week the game was in Basel and uh, since my brother, one of my, the older of my two younger brothers, is living close to Basel and my sister was visiting him, uh, two of the four kids of my parents were at that game where Lask completely sensationally won 2-1 uh, in Switzerland. Uh, they had a 2-0 lead, um, really dominated Basel and got a very deserved victory. And so it was the other two brothers, me and my other brother who I actually met in the stadium. Didn't know that he's going, but he wrote to me, are you there? And I said, yes, I am. And uh, we managed to meet. And yeah, we watched the game. We were sitting at first on different spots. Uh, game was sold out uh, and we were playing in the stadium in Linz, which we haven't played in for three years because of some weird uh, deals with the city. It was great to play in the big stadium again, I have to say, although it's a horrible stadium overall with an athletics track around and the overall feeling is kind of, you know. I can make a whole video on why the stadium is bad. The good news is the city gifted us more or less the stadium for 80 years and we can build a whole soccer, uh, a whole new soccer arena, which um, I'm quite excited about. But at least the location is uh, kind of legendary. So yeah, uh, the game started and Lask had a huge chance right at the beginning to throw Joao Klaus. Should have made it 1-0, uh, but then also well, um, the Basel should have made it 1-1. Uh, there was a header that went on the crossbar. Uh, and Lask is a very nasty pressing team, but this time around uh, Basel kind of could um, escape that by playing long balls. And whenever they play a long ball, they were really, really dangerous. I thought that Lusk controlled most of the game in the first half, especially for the first 30 minutes, but Basel was the more dangerous team. Uh, Lusk had chances, I think, uh, to make a goal, but uh, in the end, it was lucky that they went into the break nil-nil because there was another chance where a high ball in and the captain Valentin Stockler got really badly felt by the goalkeeper. I can see why the referee didn't give it because it didn't look like that much. It seems like the Stocker just uh, fell into the goal trying to convert it. But if you look in the replay, I mean, he gets clearly tripped up. That should have been a penalty and that would have sent me uh, big nerves uh, right there. I mean, it wasn't nervy enough, but you know, with nil-nil, better than one-nil for Basel. Even one-nil for Basel would have been fine. Second half, Lusk clearly got the, uh, got back into the game and clearly uh, managed to get it going, uh, control Basel, and actually got a, another lucky break. I mean, already the 2-0 in Basel was a deflected shot, and this time uh, it was a, a veritable own goal. Uh, sh um, cross from Ranftl in, and it was deflected right into the near corner. 1-0, uh, absolute menace in the stadium. Um, and then there were even chances to make it 2-0, uh, not probably Samuel Tete, and I know the most of you, unless you're <laughs> insiders, don't know these names, but who should, should, should have made it 2-0. Uh, then 75th minutes, I was thinking, yeah, 1-0, but I know that Basel, always at the end of the half, they get better, and they did. 
and they had a free kick that was uh, nicely saved by Trottle after they got the equalizer, which overall on the night was a deserved result. By that time also the rain really had started uh, going and it was a real fight. It was not a pretty game to watch. Um, and yeah, uh, the nerves were high because another uh, goal by Basel would have sent it to overtime. Anyway, um, Lusk then in the last five minutes could control it the game again and through a wonderful combination um, on the side again, Raftel coming over left, playing it to Holland, an Australian guy, who plays it to Goiganger directly, who is in the box uh, near the penalty spot free and puts it home in the 89th, 2 1 Lusk, and the stadium goes nuts. Um, yeah. And then uh, four minutes stoppage time were played, and, and you know, I mean, I, I had the feeling, yeah, hopefully they don't score two goals like uh, Basel uh, gave up two goals against Eindhoven in the round. How they went past Eindhoven is a little bit beyond me, but so be it. Four minutes stoppage time, and then these scenes happened. Ragut who made it 3-1 in the end and you see celebrations all around. Um, you probably also have noticed the really ugly Lusk jerseys. The pink is because of the sponsor Best Water Technologies. We're selling our sleeves to sponsor that at the moment. I don't like it. I don't even like it that they have. They don't have the nice black and white stripes. It's kind of this grayish. Uh, on the other side, we made one of our biggest successes in this one. So I better get this one. And I want to actually have it for my wife because she's still on vacation with my girls. So that's... I want that we, when we reach the group stage, Europa League, Champions League. I mean, I'm dreaming Champions League, of course. Uh, I want her to have that uh, shirt with the pink shoulders. But let's see how it will go um yeah the game uh winning 3-1 5 to an aggregate i mean i really am beside myself uh it's also interesting the coach for battle is the long time austrian national team coach uh marcel koller who didn't get a uh, much of a welcome because in his relationship with Linz overall was not all that great anyway so uh that's the happy part for me uh we are playing of course against club club uh brugge or bruges 
who managed a 3-3 at Dynamo Kiev. Uh, and when I look uh, at the uh, Kiev, had a 1-0 lead, had a 2-1 lead. Uh, Bruges uh, equalized in the 88th and then uh, on goal 3-2 Kiev, but 3-3, uh, uh, yeah, three, there was a two sending offs. So that was a pretty tough fight. Um, I had two Ukrainians sitting in front of me who were actually <laughs> uh, taking a lot of pictures and giving me, uh, also informing me. And since I can le read it with Siri, like I could read on their cell phones, it was kind of funny. I felt better for them that uh, Kiev didn't make it, but you know, uh, I'm actually a little bit tad more happy with Bruges, but given that Salzburg really had no problem with them earlier this year. I mean, they made them themselves more, more problems than they needed. I still think Alaska rank outsiders. And the way they played today, not gonna get pretty. But in Linz, the Champions League anthem will finally be played. Okay, let's look at some other results uh, that happened tonight. Um, Karabakh, who had won the first game in Nicosia 2-1, loses his home to Apoel. 2-0, so it is uh, Apoel that moves on. Then we had Rosenborg against Maribor. Uh, already in the first game, Rosenborg won 3-1. They doubled the results, so it's again a 3-1. We talk about Kiev and uh, Bruges. Uh, Ferenc Varos at home to Dinamo Zagreb. They got a credible 1-1 one, one, uh, away from home, and then they lose 4-0 at home. Uh, that's a crazy uh that's a crazy turnaround in in a way that was one that i was fearing for lask to be honest that despite the great away result they will lose lose it at home but whew, didn't happen it could have happened honestly the craziest game of the night 1-1 between copenhagen and red star belgrade jarvenas vesta um ended 1-1 already the uh, first leg was a 1-1 so it went all the way to penalties and if you look at it they were, every team had to take 11 penalties 11 penalties absolute madness i gotta say uh just counting it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 yes the whole team took it uh javena star wins is 7 6 i think penalties uh no, uh, six five on penalties, seven seven six uh, on the night. Um, Ajax Pauk kind of feels sorry for my friend Yanis. I mean, Pauk got a credible two two result at home. They took the lead in Amsterdam. There were two penalties, so for Ajax, one was converted. Ajax makes it three one in only stoppage time. Three two for Pauk. Um, as I said, I feel I feel a little bit sorry for them. Uh, that was a really tough draw for them. Uh, Honestly, almost any other other other, other draw, I would have uh, liked their chances. Then we have Olympiakos against uh, Bajakshi here, which I find a very dicey matchup. Um, Greeks against um, Turks. Uh, Olympiakos had already won the first leg 1 0, and then winning at home 2 0, and then the two big surprises of the evening. Uh, Celtic had already won 1 against Cluj and now loses at home 3 4. Uh, Cluj. I just want to see. Cluj uh, took a 1 0 lead at halftime. Uh, Celtic turned around, um, made it um, 2 2, a uh, 2 1. Then a penalty makes it 2 2. Celtic takes a 3 2 lead. <laughs> it goes 3 3, and then in stoppage time, even 4 3. Absolute uh, madness. And then uh, the even bigger surprise to me, although I know Krasnodar is strong. Porto had won in Russia 1-0. After 34 minutes, Krasnodar has a 3-0 lead. Porto gets two more goals, but Porto is out. Absolute madness. They were in the quarterfinals last year. So yeah, uh, this sets up now the playoff matches for um, Tuesday and Wednesday. We have Cluj against Slavia. We have Apoel against Ajax. We have Zagreb against Rosenborg. Lask against Brügge. Uh, uh, I don't believe that. I really cannot believe it. Nine o'clock in the evening, though. That's late. Uh, Olympiakos against Krasnodar, and then on Wednesday, Young Boys against Cervenas Vesta. It's also an interesting matchup. Anyway, let me know what you thought about all these results. I'm, as I said, I still can't, can't, can't believe it. I need to calm myself down. I want to get a Decent amount of sleep tonight, although there might not be. I'm just super excited. Uh, 
Champions League who happened a little bit late on the, on the stadium in Leeds. That, if you would ask me five years ago when we played in the third league, I, unbelievable, unbelievable. You won't see me that happy at uh, that many times, but this, as I said, Fatsa SK. Let me know what you thought about this video. Drop some comments below. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. As I said, I'm going to be working, I'm already collecting some data for um, some Jersey review re stuff. I will be away from home for the next um, three days, so I'm not, not sure uh, how I will be posting. So um, just have that in mind. Uh, but I will surely talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.